that's the difference. Like, that's probably one of the, the better clubs that I've played at, fan-wise. The first year I was there, we went up to Brisbane and there was 50,000 and like, probably 40 of them were Red V members, you know what I mean? And they just come out of the you know woodworks and even in the grand final, I remember running out just looking up going, oh, I can't believe how much red and white there is in the crowd. When Wayne rolled in the door, this club didn't have a lot of belief. There was a lot of people that had gone out of their way to make sure that we knew that we were chokers. We had a little bit of a thing there about the true believers. To all the true believers! If one thing changed that year, and it might have been our year. Put two down for Nightingale! It just had that air about it where what we're doing, it wasn't going to be stopped. The Dragons win the grand final! It was just so much relief after waiting 31 years. We've been knocked down and got back up again each time, and now we're here! To all the true believers! Hi, I'm Jason Nightingale, and you are listening to the True Believers Podcast. Today, I'm sitting down with two-time Premiership winner, Jeremy Smith. Welcome, Jeremy Smith. So we're here to talk about what happened uh, 10 years ago, but for us to do that, we're going to go back a bit of background um, that yourself and Darius uh, had an edge over the rest of our playing group, um, being lucky enough to to win a competition um, before arriving in our club, so... What was that like, uh, I suppose, to win in 2007? And then also, what sort of experience do you think that, that allowed you to bring to our group? It sort of started in 2006. We played um, the Broncos in the grand final the year before. And I was lucky enough to play in that. And then, obviously, 2007, we had another cracking year and we went on to play in a grand final. I suppose it's a it's a surreal feeling, actually. But in 2007, you know, we, we had a cracking team that year. Um, Everything sort of fell into place. Yeah, and you have that 06 learning curve as well um, to go mm. to 07, those experience. You're sort of kind of big game hardened um, by the time you did turn up um, with our with our crew. Yeah, definitely. You know, I suppose that you look at some of the players they did have in Melbourne when I was there, you know, they were certainly, you know, tough nuts and you trained and you played the same way and they trained tough down there and, and you know, they played tough in, in themselves, so... Yeah, it's it definitely a, one of those experiences that I suppose you bring to a club. Everyone expects some big things of you because you're you know, always playing in the big games and, and having good teams. Um, I suppose it all goes back to just making sure that everyone's, whatever you're doing, you're doing to the best of your ability and making sure everyone's watching you when you're doing it. I want to wind you back to, I suppose, that time we, we spoke about um, when you did come to the club, coming as an insider, uh, outsider at that stage, we had quite a lot of um, local juniors, um, people that have been around the club for a long time. How, how did that sort of the happen? Was that something Wayne was buttering you up with? Yeah, he was sort of talking to me because he knew I was coming off contract. So he sort of asked me a question and then I just said, yeah, mate, he goes, I'm going, I'm going to go to the Dragons. Um, what do you think? And I looked at the roster then. I was like, oh, yeah, you know, could be half decent. And... Um, he just he told me what he needed from the club and and how he you know wanted what what role he wanted me to play um, in coming to the club I suppose after all those years having no success at the Dragons um, he wanted to instill something tough about the club again. It was good to see that that he did use those opportunities to as a bit of business development for for our club. Yeah, well it's funny you say because I met with um, Brownie and um, Big Albert Young. And the end of 2007, just after we won the comp down in Melbourne, because they wanted me to come the following year. And um, well, I met them, yeah, oh no, it was mid-year. And they come down to Melbourne and I, I met up with them and sort of sat down and spoke with them about coming to coming to the club in 08. And um, it sort of just didn't work out, you know. Like there was a chance there, I probably could have been there, but would have I done the same job? I don't know, like, because they would have been asking different sort of roles and what Wayne sort of asked me, you know, he, he was like quite... Simple as you know, and to the point, what he's what he wanted me to do. Coached under um, two great coaches of of the game. Really, it's not even our area; it's past areas as well. In um, Craig Bellamy and and Wayne Bennett. Um, yeah, you want to share a bit of insight into maybe the differences or, or what it, what it is that has made them so so successful for so many years. Yeah, I suppose um, a lot of people ask me that question all the time. Actually, it's it, they're much of a muchness, you know. Um, Wayne, he's a straight shooter. He knows what he wants and he knows how to get it. Um, Coaching-wise, you know, he will tell you when you've played good. He won't tell you you've ever played great. You've always played good. Um, and Belliac's the same. You know, he's, he's a straight shooter too. You know where you stand with him. Um, 
you know, co- coaching methods, I dare say, belly aches gone with the times, and Wayne, he's just sort of stick to, sticks to what he knows, and he, he knows what works, or well, they both do, you know. I suppose you have to come up with a different game plan um, for different teams, but I, I got told by this bloke up here, he's pretty close with Wayne in 2006, we played the Bronx, and we were, we were you know, we were specials to win Melbourne, and um, all year, no one had ever tested us on the footy on the outside like because they couldn't get around us and then we got to the grand final got told that all week Wayne coached them about playing the inside ball playing the inside ball and that's I look back now and that's how we got beat by the Bronx yeah so you know they sort of try to outsmart each other in different ways and it's like a big game of chess to them I think who gave the better spray oh Belliac Belli- yeah probably Belliac he's yeah. got a good spray because he spits and carries on yeah. and like, he's real emotional about who he's telling off yeah I remember Israel Folau, his first game at Melbourne in back 2007, I think now. We come in at half time and Izzy, he had just had a shocker in the first half and he sat down next to me, the poor little kid. He was probably about 17 or 18 and Belax just unloaded on him like he was playing on the wing. He should have been catching all these balls and he nearly cried, eh? I was just like, mate, don't worry about this guy. <laughs> he came out and had a blind in the second half, but... Yes, it did. Works for some people. <laughs> yeah, exactly for some. You've got to choose your targets, don't you? As we know. <laughs> yeah, <that's right. laughs> Um, yeah, I, I, I suppose Wayne always does it with this weird, sarcastic smirk that you don't know if he's like, you know, he's spraying you, but he's sort of half smirking with his creepy assassin smile. So it's like a. Oh, oh. he does. He gives you that stupid look and points that stupid. Look. Oh, the, the crooked finger that, <laughs> that Carl Stanley loves. The... <laughs> so we're, we're rolling into, you played um, 15 games uh, in 2009. Um, what, what did you sort of get out of that? The first year of the club, um, first full season of the way you had him in Kiwis. Um, what do you think we gained out of out of getting um, to that minor premiership, I suppose? Well, it's funny to say, like, the first year there, I got on the camp. We got, I wanted back to the camp. Oh, wanted back to the camp that we shouldn't have had to yeah, go to. And um, Frank and bloody Bowie Scott didn't didn't speak to me for that whole camp. Who? Do you remember that? Bowie Scott. Bowie and yeah. um, Justin Paul. Oh, yes, yes. Yeah. I do remember so that. So they had a bet. First person to talk to me, as and whatever... And like all camp, I was just trying to get to like, just, hey, what's going on? I'll get around everyone. And then I had that big wrestle off of Bowie in the sand. Yeah. Remember that? Yeah, the <laughs> sock, the sock. Time. Yeah. It's so Bowie to have a bet to not talk to you. And it would have been because, yeah, they would have just been like, oh, this guy's competing for our spot. That's the, that's, this is how we're going to treat him. I want it back to the following year when we played um, the Dragons in Melbourne and we had that big punch up and like, there was yeah. only 10 men on the field. Yeah, 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 yeah. Cooper spills it. It's a knock on from the Dragons. And the boys, the boys are getting a little angry. In fact, it's beyond anger. It's on. Billy Slater, he's throwing them like there's no tomorrow. Nightingale's in there. This is State of Origin 1984. They have not stopped. Bo Scott like a windmill in the middle of this. From that game, because I threw the ball at Pori, after I scored that try and threw, pegged the ball straight at his head and then Bowie oh, yeah, that come rushing in. I was like, oh, there we go. And that's what I put it down to. Yeah, oh, that 100%, that camp. grudge, 100%. And yeah. Pori and Bowie, they, they, yeah, Pori still hold a grudge. He goes the storm though, and they are in. Jeremy Smith scores, and it's on again. The irony of this is Jeremy Smith is going to be wearing the red V in 2009. So we're at day two of the camp and we've just run 20 kilometres through the through the bush, through the thing. Remember, I, you, I don't know if you remember this part where they're like, we're, we're, we're about 15, 16 kilometres into it and they go 500 metres to the finish and it was 5K. And they told us we were there. So every next corner, every corner was the next corner until we eventually got to the beach. We did all these things and then... Yeah, sets the sets the occasion for the for the wrestle off. Jez's Jez has walked in straight off his uh, beach buggy. Yeah, what are we doing? We're wrestling. I've been at the storm. I've been, I st- I invented this wrestling stuff. Please. <laughs> and then Bowie's uh, yeah, all the physical. And then uh, yeah, so you want to you want to talk us through who won that wrestle off? Bowie got me. Yeah, it was an elimination. So that was the top two, the kings. Yeah. So it was a, a pair up, pair up. Winner goes on. Winner goes on. And um, I remember years in the in the ocean and everything, and um, yeah, I suppose like yeah, you we wrestled like, for about a good bloody hour or so, yeah. And everyone else is just sitting down, kicking back, just resting. And I'm I'm just like looking at like mate, 
just calm down. It was forever. Was and they, they were like, we were trying to get people to tap out. Like, just, nah, just pull them out, call yeah. it a draw. Nah, no one's calling a draw. I think that's that, right. you know, the, the reason Wayne he's still... just let it go and he wanted just to see the yeah. fight. And that's what built, you know, that, our season, I suppose. Like, yeah. he, re- he always reverts back to it about, yeah. you know, what everyone got out of that big, that wrestle that day. Because, you know, they, him and I, we were fine till the end. Mm. And it wasn't going to be, yeah, it was going to be one winner. And that's what Wayne wanted yeah. to install uh, and it was... in our team, in our pack. Exactly. It was pull the sock off. It's as simple as that. And they couldn't get each other's sock off. It was that's all you had to do was pull the sack off. And we're 40 minutes into it at the end of day two. Yeah, but we had been going footy socks on and I had like ankle socks. Yeah, yeah you had like little dink, <laughs> dink them and they're gone. So, um, but I, I, you obviously earned their respect. Bowie and I become real good mates after that. Like, I still talk to him all the time now. Um, when I was living in Wollongong, he come around and, like, and this was sort of not long after like, we started talking and that. And he put all the down lights in my house for me, and yeah. like just, just a real, you know, in that respect, like you said. But yeah, exactly. He had for me. I, now, when I played with him through at the Dragons, and obviously at the Knights as well, and I just had to look at him, and I knew that he'd have me back because yeah. we both played on the same side, and that's all I had to do. Like even all that year, the 2010 year, I just look at Bowie, and I just know that. Wherever I went, he'd be not far yeah, behind. Exactly, you're ready to make that sacrifice. Hundred percent. Mm, yeah. So. Yeah. So fast forward to the the, the th- stuff we learnt, and then the bad times. Um, you know, I remember going down to Jared Hayne in in uh, his Parramatta Eels in that first semi, um, and then having to back oh, it up. Yeah. What are you, what are you, what are your memories of of that first semi? Well, it started the week before as well. We, we played Parramatta the week before, and we put like thirty on, and then like, I think that the mindset that they gave us from that week just flowing into it. We're full of confidence, like we just like and. You can sort of sense, well, I get to sense how some people are, but you know how some people are before the game and you, you look at them and you can tell their body language whether they're going to be on or off. Yeah. You know, and that's the sort of sense I got in that that changed it. Like I looked at a couple of blokes and their body language wasn't telling me, like, I'm ready to go. Mm. So, you know, we're going to walk over yeah. Parramatta the first week and, and obviously Jared Hayne come out and, off the park. And then the the tough trip, the old school. I say we're robbed of you know robbed of a final series, having to go up to Brisbane um, week two, and they've got nothing to lose, oh. and we've got everything to lose. Um, what are, what are your memories on that game and and the the fallout? Well, I just think what Wayne going back up to Brisbane, you know, all the hype around that. Mm. Um, I think we just got caught up in the emotion a bit too much, and Brisbane wanted it more than us at the end of the day. Um, yeah, it was was one of one of those games where we we're expected to do well. Yeah. Because we played in Brisbane. Mm. But as you know, on anyone's day, anyone can beat anyone. What do you remember after the game and uh, I think probably your you person that had the most insight after losing 06 into the bounce back that comes. What what do you remember um from from our group? We had a senior player meeting after that final and you know, we just sort of Whatever happened and it happened to us as mm. senior players because like we're the core group mm. that sort of drive the ship, you know. So we, before we had to go back into that, we sort of nutted it all out and seen how we went wrong and, and learned on what we had to do to make it better the next year. Yeah. Um, like obviously Coops, we had um, Gaz in there, myself, Benny Hornby, Dean Young, but we just didn't steer the ship as well as what. We probably should have. Yeah. Um, you know, we let we let the team down because we, you know, as leaders, you, you know, you got to take that blame. Yeah. And what we were doing, we weren't doing well enough. Just doing the one percenters, and that's what we worked hard on in 2010. Everyone making that line and everyone going that extra step for one another. Yeah. Oh, exactly. I, I think those that, standards were going. I think Dino spent mentions that. Uh, that that and when we went to the off season, nothing really needed to change as far as our approach. Um, and I think yeah. that's probably something that came out of, of learn your lessons. But he said that nothing was changing. And I think that's a good confident booster as well after taking such a tough loss. Yeah, definitely. Uh, you know, it was a tough year and uh, we, we did so well. We got the club back up to where we wanted to be. But then, you know, that old tag come in and that's the first sort of our experience, that tag of you know, obviously being chokes for so yeah. long. And yeah. we got that again. As uh, for myself, it, that drove me to be better and go yeah. one step further because I knew we had the team and you know, it was just more about being persistent in what we did for 80 minutes every week. 
did you feel that um, the group had that that um, that was carrying a bit of weight? Uh, I wasn't part of that 05 group and, and 06 group, but, but, but Benny Hornby, Dean Young, Benny Cray, all those guys were. Um, did you feel that they had a little bit of insecurity around that? Yeah, yeah, definitely you would. You know, like you can't say you wouldn't as a player like that to be expected to do so well. I think the club in itself has a you know really a real pride. They've got so much pride about their club and and just want to win because they did for so long. Yeah, and they I, had such good teams. That's a really good point. I think that pride of the club and that and that it, it, whether you've been there for one year or one day, that's it's, right. It, that that expectation's yeah. there and that that you're carrying whether you are part of actual proof that did it or you're just there and you turn up that that pride of the Red V and, yeah, that's the, right. and, the, and the support. Well, well, I think that's, that's the difference. Like, that's probably one of the, the better clubs that I've played at fan-wise. The first year I was there, we went up to Brisbane and there was 50,000 and like, probably 40 of them were Red V members, yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah. And they just come out of the you know woodworks and even in the grand final, I remember running out just looking up going, oh, I can't believe how much red and white there is in the crowd. So we're rolling into to the next year. You had a few little injury um, concerns. So how did you get back? You, you had that sort of injury, a couple of injuries, came back and, and did your calf, spent a lot of time in rehab. What were you thinking during that period and what was motivating you to, to get yourself um, where you need to be? Well, I've just seen the boys do well. You know, we, we had a couple of really good runs um, while I was in rehab. You know, we went on a couple of game winning streak and then, we'd, you know, we'd, we're matching it with the best in the comp at that stage. And I think, you know, watching the boys do that week in, week out sort of helped me get along and helped me get through the day-to-day torturousness that you go through when you're in rehab. You came back, um, sort of back end of that season, but it was I think it was the start of us lifting the tempo. What are your thoughts and memories on um, that, that build-up into that final series as opposed to the year before? Playing the Rabbitohs, they weren't too bad. You know, they sort of put up a fight, but then playing Manly, they, were, they weren't much chop at all. Mm. And yeah, then, they were pretty um, ravaged by injury by then. Yeah, yeah. So I suppose leading into that, that is a confidence boost. I suppose the biggest thing I got out of Manly was, yeah, they were busted and we were always going to win that, but it was it yeah. was very much focused on how we were playing and how we were not, not so much yeah, that's right. who we were playing. And I suppose that's why we put so many points on them that day. Mm, exactly. Yeah, and I think that mindset was probably good to have um, going into the, yeah. the week off. So. You would have uh, loved having the week off. And then what do you remember about a Bondi bubble that Wayne invited us into? I said to him, I said, mate, why are we going to stay there? That's like way out of town. Like, get somewhere in town closer. And he's like, nah, I'm going to stay out here. I was like, mate, what for? There's nothing out there. He goes, yeah, no, nah, we'll be right out here. There's and he nothing just, out there. He just gave nothing up. Yeah. Yeah, so and then we went in. We had that that great build up and the and the week and um, prelim going into to Tigers. Did you have a preference as to who to play out of? Um, Canberra and, and Tigers? I sort of wanted to play Canberra because they were a bit more, you know, big and sort of structured, a bit more go forward them. So it would have been a bit more physical game for us. And playing, well, obviously playing the Tigers, you know, what well, Benji, he was, he was pretty hot at that stage that year. I was sort of leaning towards more Canberra just for that, that, that sack that it was going to be a, going to be a fast game against, against the Tigers. And it, and it was, you know what I mean? Mm. It, was, um, it was an intense game that yeah. game. Yeah, I think uh, the speaking about especially Dino's doesn't have a lot of that 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 ad lib side of play was was susceptible and it got it caught them out caught us out a few times through throughout our, our battles with them but um yeah that game was was not really like that um what, what are your what are your memories of that and did you score in that game I can't really remember yeah scored yeah I got us on, I put us on the map mate. Oh, I'm pretty <laughs> sure that won us the game <laughs> <laughs> Just nine metres out from the line. Fiend to Jeremy Smith. He's over. Can he get it down this time? Referee yeah. Shane Hay points to the spot. It was a physical game like, leading up to that point. I think it was in well, the 20th, nearly 30th minute. Yeah. It was like it was an end-to-end game. It was, it was really physical. Like It was one of the harder games that I played, lead, like prelim games anyway. Um, I suppose that's what you want in a, in a way, like leading us into the following week. But that, that game... You know, I was just sort of taking a hit up. We got a quick play of the ball, and things hit me, put me under the post, and yeah, it was um, it was definitely what we needed because it was it went end to end, and the longer the ball's in play, you know, the you know the more tired you get, and no one was kicking for touch, and it was just what well, we're battling away for field position, and you know, we 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 managed to score a try. It was it was one of those tries as well, I suppose that 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 game was looking like that. It was very much, you got over, powered, and then boom, cracked it. It was like a yeah. straw, straw that broke the camel's back. And, you know, they had an early try that was sort of similar off a late offload. And 
early. Mm. We, Sowie and I stuffed up on the of the other edge and let Lottie score an easy one. But um, yeah, roll into half time. Do you remember much? We were down at down. At, you were just gonna say standard wingers and Sowie giving. <laughs> mate, we'll save that for later. Mate, he's got one job. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then, do you remember much about that half time other than being? Exhausted, and do you remember much of Wayne's speech or any of the boys? Leading into half time, we'd just been hanging in there. What was the score? I think it was 12, 12 6, was it? Yeah, I think so. We we're losing. Uh, yeah, we were down, but like we, we were still in the we were still in the game, and I think um, we knew West were going to come out and try that flamboyant type, type of footy, but yeah. we just managed to nail them in there, and we're, we're making them, you know, make passes that weren't sort of sitting on them, yeah. just by the pressure we're putting in defence, but. It was, um, he, he just sort of said to us, like, let's keep going out and just keep sticking at what we've been doing. And what yeah. we were doing was completing mm. the footy, you know what I mean? Like, we didn't really give too many, you know, penalties away or, or knock the ball on. So yeah. it was end to end stuff. And like, he was pretty happy at half time. Yeah. Just the I'm way we were going about things. And um, we, we hung in there and hung in there. And yeah, that's how we knocked them over at the end. They're going back to Soward. Here's the shot. He had a mile of time. And it sails over the uprights, and it's a field goal to Jamie Soward. The last five minutes or so was it was tough. That was tough, and they were throwing everything at us. And you know, I suppose we, we managed to hang on. Like I said, it was probably one of the tougher games that they've ever played in. Mm. And then or I suppose leading into the following week, we we played that hard that that week mm. that we knew we were what hardened for the mm. following week because we knew it was going to be tough against the Roosters because it's our big physical pack. Yeah. But I just think that set us on a good pace. Yeah, I think that the, which you didn't have to deal with is that the the boys like that had been around in 05 and had all those failures. That was their hurdle that they'd never got past. So there was there was a bit big amount of relief that came from those older boys. Did you feel any of that? The the elation that they that they got for even making a grand final. You're like, oh, bro, I've been in four of these. What are you doing? <laughs> yeah, no. Nah, well, everyone everyone reacts different, I suppose. Um, and I suppose, like you said, for those boys that had been there and, you know, couldn't make their last jump, finally make it. Yeah, there was a lot of relief. I suppose there was a lot that lifted off their shoulders. And that's why I think we went out and played the following week as we did. You know, it was just another game for us. We, we played our grand final week before, you know I mean? We were always going to win that next week. Yeah. Yeah, what was your week like that, you know, being the, uh, well, that was your fourth time, fourth time in the big dance. Was that a boring week for you as... as... <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, it does get. Oh, uh, you got that breakfast <laughs> again. <Grandma> breakfast is <laughs> up at five. Uh, on live TV, sitting there still tired. <laughs> <laughs> For everyone else, we're like, oh, look at this. This is great. And you're like, oh, geez. It was good. Like, I enjoyed it. Like, sitting back now, watching everyone, like, the way they go through the grand final week, you know. For me, it was, it was just good to see people being able to do that. Like, and I've been lucky enough to experience it a few times. And, just the way people reacted, like you look back now and you'll still remember bits and pieces of the week and the lead up and uh, how much fun we did have, which made playing football on Sunday night easiest. The fact that you've done it many times, did you take on um, yourself in, in the leadership group and being there so many times, did you t take on any um, conscious effort to, to mentor or to help people through? What sort of conversations were you having with those uh, us uh, grand final virgins that week? Well, it would have been just simple, you know, what we've done all year worked for us, so there was no point changing anything or reinventing the wheel for us as such. Mm. Um, we run hard, five or six, five tackles, kick the ball on, mm. yeah, and that's all we had to do. Mm. And as soon as we got into the, the ball playing area, that's when Sally and Jesse could take over and, you know, we were the magic. Mm. So <clears throat> more for me that week, I was just letting... Pissy you know, and, and so we, you know, just stay calm and make sure we're getting to our spot so we can put ourselves in the best opportunity for the kick chase and and the rest, you know, the rest is history because you know, when, when we're sort of going one out in the finals, as we did, before we started passing the ball, we were making so much yards. Yeah. And, you know, that worked for us all that year and leading into the, the final series. It was um, the simple things that worked really well for us. Mm. Well, we got labelled a boring team for... I don't know, a few, yeah. few, you know, a few weeks in a row there because we were just giving nothing away and we were doing it easy and teams were finding it hard to score against us. I remember this very vividly because I'm, yeah, inspired by you slash uh, also saw it, reminded of it. You were actually the last person to talk 
before we ran out, before we did our little huddle. Do you remember your words of wisdom um, in the in the huddle to the group before before we ran out to that field in Grand Final Day? Yeah, it's you know, I didn't really sort of say too much because obviously everyone else was doing their little bit, but yeah, you know, I'd like to have the last word just to make sure that I could look in everyone's eyes at that time and make sure you know they're at where they're meant to be, getting ready to run out. And yeah, the last words I did say, you know, is make your first effort your best effort. Mm -hmm. Because I always believed in, you know, you you kick off, you run down there, you hit someone hard, you're in the game straight away. Mm -hmm. You chase from mark, you go again. And that just sets a tone for yourself. And I suppose that's what was working for us. Like, Mm -hmm. we made our first carry, whoever got the ball, first run, like, straight off the back fence, second run off the back fence. And that just gets everyone into the game, makes sure everyone get a touch early. and that just sets you in, in good stead for your game. You know, you know, you're in the game. The longer you don't touch the ball, the further your mind goes from from the game. And you know, when you do get the ball, you, nine times out of ten, you probably drop it. Yeah, I think that's a, it's another thing that you sort of focus on is just anything that can everything flows on from there and taking any anxiety mm. out of it. I think that's the 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 head noise that everyone gets. Um, yeah. I suppose those simple things like making sure that you're just going hard at it, and then the flow on effect is confidence that you build and then you're not you take away any fear that you might have had the fact that this is a big occasion yeah yeah definitely you know i think we started that game well too which is which is what we wanted and what we needed before the the rain started falling but it was a good game and we kept it in tight and got a lucky try early and yeah so what that that lucky try um Gaz, Gaz would see it differently, and Sowie would definitely see it differently. That was, you know, something we practiced all uh, all week on. Wayne led us to have one trick play. He said, "Okay, one, you're allowed to do one trick play. We're going to call it French fry." Um, what do you remember about that that coming off, and then and then your part? Um, Sowie tells a little bit of a story about you, um, maybe uh, saying saying some words to him after after we scored that try. What do you remember about that? Yeah, well, I knew it was it was on because that's obviously we were working our forwards were working around getting the kick, getting him over to the right spot, and then him thinking it over. Hornby knows there's a chance. Soward puts a little kick in. There's a try for Gaznia. Gaznia, I think, has got the first try. As he's thinking it over, I've seen Gaz just steamed onto it, and I was like, "We're on here." And then, well, obviously, the hype of the try and the, the crowd going berserk and um, we sort of yahooing and carrying on. And so I could just tell Sowie, he was like carrying on a little bit too much for my liking. And I just I just needed him to calm it down and you know, put this kick over and you know, we need to get back into the game again and you know, sort of start focusing on what, what your role is next. And, uh, you know, he was... He was good about it. He, he got he got on with the job. He does tell that story with a bit of endearment about like that focus and bringing back the focus. And I think that was probably a key key moment in that time. So just where you go and show you uh, my four four grand final experience, I suppose. <laughs> is, is that all? <laughs> <laughs> and what do you remember? Uh, um, so fr- from there, um, things didn't go our way. And and what do you remember about the the getting into half time? I didn't think like we were doing too much too much wrong. I think. You know, they got a, a couple of lucky tries and um, we weren't too far off the pace. And I remember Wayne coming in saying he was pretty happy with our first half of footy. Mm. And he, he just knew that by the end of the day, if we kept sticking at what we were doing, because it was starting, it was raining, the ball was dewy, kicking long, you know, getting into them in defence and, you know, putting pressure on with our defence. And I think that's what, you know, we did. We come out in the second half and once we started getting the upper hand, the rest was easy. Yeah, we did. We came out in the second half and like you said, Put, forcing the pressure, all the forwards creating errors with their defence, mm. and um, yeah, I, I, that was uh, it, it. Sort of did start to happen, and, and the momentum momentum shifted. Um, what what was your memory about when the momentum started to shift and we started to build that pressure and force some errors? When you're doing everything right, you're not dropping the ball, you're kicking it long, and then you're getting stuck into them with your defence. It you know it, you rest. It's just I don't know. There's something about it. Everyone's oozing confidence. Mm. They just got a spring in their step and. Yeah, you know, momentum's hard to swing if you if you're not on the right side, and it's, it was definitely made it easier leading into the last probably ten minutes I reckon. Like, and we knew we'd won, yeah. but and there was nothing that was going to stop us then. And I think just the confidence, knowing that you're just watching that clock tick down, and it's just the longest minutes of your life <laughs> until that siren goes off, and then yeah, just looking around, it's pretty surreal, eh?
Yeah, and you did mention that it was pretty packed full of red and white, that, that, that stadium. So be able to... Yeah, I did. I yeah. did. It was, like I said, it, we ran out at the start. And I'd only played with Melbourne in the other grand finals. So there was probably, there would probably not even be really half Melbourne supporters there. Probably maybe just, yeah, just under half of the stadium. So there's not too many, but we run out that day seeing red and white everywhere. It was the majority of the stadium and the roar was... was just remember it vibrating through my body, yeah. Yeah, a couple of, a couple of laps after. What was your favourite try? Oh, I just remember like after the game. Actually. Oh, Mac. Far out, mate. Anyway, well, um, Feeney's Feeney, Feeney's favourite try was when he when when he set up for field goal and then just show and go. He, yeah. yeah, that was. I could see that coming a mile away. Oh, I, know. I was there too. I, I was like, there. He just I'm give me the pretty ball. Pretty sure I, you and I were either side. Nathan. Is reading off the same page, and Nathan ah, Fiend gets ever. a try. But yeah, that, that should have been our try. Feeny sold that office. Yeah, I know. Typical. Um, so you remember after the game? So then was season. What 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 were your memories? You, you weren't a bad um, off-field um, performer. Um, what do you remember about the, the straight after the game? Initially, we'd done the lap and, and those sort of things. Um, what, what was special special memories that you call upon for after that? Well, just I suppose just walking around and seeing um, the boys that had gone through that much pain lifting that that trophy and you know, just the their faces I can still picture to this day. You know, just there's nothing that could wipe that smile off that face that day. That's for sure. Yeah. Um, I've got a good picture with with Nugget there holding up the the trophy. I still look back at that now and go, well, like look, you can just tell the relief on his face. Yeah. Of being able to. Uh, to lift that trophy once and for all, and I suppose it's the best part of the day, walking around and showing showing off your new jewelry. Hundred <laughs> percent. Um, and and Dino said the first emotion he got was was relief when when we won mm. that when when we won that because you know a lot of lot of years of hard work. What was your uh, first emotion? I just remember looking at Nev, hmm. just laughing at him like as he's walking across. Both got their hands up in the air, just laughing, just like. <laughs> We done it. Yeah. We 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 done it. At joy. And I suppose, especially for you blokes, you know, being there and, and living through that from an outsider's point of view, it's just like more relief to us that we were able to contribute and get us to where we wanted to be and and you know, being able to lift that trophy. It's yeah. um, very special. It's, you know, it's one thing that I cherish anyway. Yeah, hundred percent. And then um yeah, so get getting to to post match, um, days of partying and um, plenty of carrying on, and then a, v- a vivid memory and a bit of a, I suppose, come down moment um, is sitting next to you and Feeney on the plane on the way to New Zealand day after day after our presentation, which was Friday after the grand final. Um, yeah, yeah, that was that was hard actually. Sweet brother. Well, um, no, that pretty much brings us to the end. Thank you very much for for giving up your time and thanks for the chat. All right, too easy. Cheers, brother. Later, Cody. On the next episode of the True Believers podcast, I'm sitting down with 2010 Clive Churchill medalist Darius Boyd. I actually have a funny story. I can't remember what year it was or when it was, but I remember getting my bag off the off the um, the spinning wheel thing at the airport, and um, on my bag tag, someone wrote chokers on it. Um, So one of the bag handlers uh, out the back at some point in between the 09-10 seasons um, just wrote chokers on my on my bag tag.